Today we're going to be grooming Bailey. Definitely one of the most important things about grooming a dog is making sure you get them good and clean before you start grooming. That way the hair is fluffy and ready to go. Also fluff and dry is very important. Because if you don't get them good and fluffy and good and dry it's hard for the blades to go through. One thing I've learned is if you take the towels and you dry the dogs really good it's a lot easier to blow dry them and they don't have to be on the table quite as long so this reduce stress and you can get it done easily now I use a high, high pressure blow dryer but I put it on about half it basically blows the water off. If the dogs can't handle it, I cut it way back. And if they can't handle that, I put them in a cool dryer. Okay, we're gonna be doing a schnauzer cut today and Again, one of the most important things too about grooming is brushing that dog out. I mean, every bit of the dog. It lines the hair up, makes it mat free. If there's mats, you can get those out of there before the blades hit them, leaving a spot. You want the hair as pure as it can be and as clean as it can be and as dry as it can be when you're grooming the dog. Now then, I'm going to be using a 10. That's the first thing I usually do on the schnauzer. We'll go down the back and I'm going to chisel out a pattern. You can see partially a pattern there already. And I flow with the hair. I get a little bit off the back first and then, uh, and then I set the pattern. Just sort of clean this out. This cut's kind of short. And I start from the front of the neck. And I do what is called an S shape. Come down, up, and then back down again. So come up. Making that line just as tight as I can on there. And then I fill in in between. Now a lot of groomers don't do it this way. Uh, this is the way that I do it. I like a nice separation between the hairs. And there is a transition involved and I'll show you that in just a little bit. But I usually go a 10 on the back. Now if it's an older dog, a lot of times I use a 7. And if their hair is super thin then I use a 5. <clears throat> but for all intent and purposes, if they got nice healthy skin and good hair I use a 10. Now if they've got bad skin you've got to sort of figure out what you're going to do because you don't want to irritate the skin. If they have moles you've got to watch that too. Now I extend the hair down all the way under their legs here for this kind of cut. And we're going to do this side the same way what I call an S shape and we scoop down and then we come back up and then we go back down. I extend this line under the tail right into the inside of the leg. Again, this is just the way that I do it. Um, some groomers don't do it this way, they just glide off the back like they do a Yorkie. But I think it looks nice and clean the way that I do it this way. Now 
Now, I don't bring the lines straight across when I go down the side of them. I do it in an S pattern, like the curvature of the body. Now when I start on their head, I start at the eyebrows, right there about the center, and I come all the way back and down. Flowing with the hair, flowing with the hair, flowing with the hair. That way you don't get a, a checkered pattern. Okay, now I'm going to go under the neck and I'm going to go over like this, sort of like a horseshoe. Almost the way you do a cocker. Because I leave this part of the hair just a little longer. And come up right by the beard. Right here. sure the brush brush out everything and even it up now I'm going to get in between the nose here and clear out right up to that eyebrow and right in the center of it using a 10 I clear that out just a little bit, just a little bit, leaving those eyebrows, because in a minute I'm going to trim those. Now I go underneath the eye too, and I clear that out right there, going backwards, gently. Be very careful around the eyes, because they like to wiggle. Clear out right around the eye there. That way you get a nice departure between the two colors of the hair. Clean out between the eyebrows. And then you go downward like this, flowing with the hair. Going all the way around the dog's head. Do this side the same way. Be careful of the ears. Don't run it into the ears. They get close and then you come down the side of the head like this too. Just like that. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to try and connect these both sides. Went underneath, all the way around, all the way around, connecting the two sides. Checking the heat of my clippers. Sometimes those tins get hot. I'm going to use another tin here. Um, make sure I got ceramic. Ceramic don't get as hot always have at least two or three of the same blade on hand so if one gets hot I can switch it out and especially when you get around the ears the ears are very sensitive and you're right at the skin you don't wanna don't wanna burn their ears so that's why I switch that blade out now I'm flowing with the hair here you gotta be careful right in here that's where the ear flips over you go against the grain See right there, right in the ear, you got to be very careful right there because that's where that ear flips and you can get that in the clippers and you don't want to do that. That is not good. And I'm always cautious, I don't push too hard because you never know if you're going to catch something in there, a little mole or something like that. <clears throat> Get this side, we we'll do it the same way, flowing with the direction of the hair, flowing with the hair, flowing with the hair. Okay. I'm 
One thing that dogs love to do is they love to turn all the way around while you're trying to work on them. See, he's trying to sneak around now. Now, I'm using a Moser and I'm getting in the ears here, sort of combing the hair up a little bit so it hits it. I've got the blade all the way up. That way it don't catch any skin and you flow with the hair on this also. Right at the bottom of the ear you got to be careful there's also a little flap and I'm pushing the hair up and I'm going into my finger see into my finger into my finger into my finger. Now if you do it this way you don't have to get a pair of scissors and risk cutting the dog's hair going around it. See. Right in my thumb, I'm going into my thumb, into my thumb. <laughs> and as you see, he keeps trying to turn around. They always do that. They don't want to be bothered with it, but you got to constantly keep turning them. Into my finger. Very careful right through here. I'm going to go up that way. Go against the grain because of a little flap underneath it. Going into my thumb, going into my thumb. And that brings it right to the edge. There we go, right in my finger. Now that shows you how safe these blades are too. You just gotta watch what you're doing. If it's not cutting my thumb, then it's not gonna cut your dog unless you hit them at the wrong angle. brushing the hair out of the ear there a little bit. I do not pluck the hair in the ears. I've argued with groomers about this. Some people do it. Um, if there's not a lot of hair, I do it. Just a little bit, but you pull something by the root in a nice, warm, moist area. It'll cause infection. And I'm going into my finger on this too. Now with the blade all the way up, it's about equivalent to a 30, 30 blade, 30 or 40. So it cuts pretty close in there. The main thing is to be gentle, going into my thumb there, is to be gentle. You don't want to push too hard. Now I'm going to clean the bottom of the pad here. I'm going to brush the pad forward. So. Take the clippers and then I'm gonna go the opposite direction, going backwards. See, into my thumb, into my thumb. That way I got a <clears throat> smooth, smooth stopping point. Get around all those pads. You have to do this for every single dog because that hair gets under their feet, they don't have traction, they fall downstairs. Dog has to have traction. Alright, and I'm going to do, let's see, this foot the same way. I'm going to do them all the same way, go all the way around. Underneath all the feet. Now, I'm switch this out. And we're going to do under that pattern that I got. I'm going to use a four. Put that on. The one on the top is a ten, the one on the bottom is a four. A little bit more than double the size of hair, the length, and I'm flowing off the dog, lifting his leg off, up, gliding off of it. Glide off 
his legs, glide down the sides. Now as I get towards the bottom of that hair, I lighten up because I want the hair to flow downward. I want it to be a skirt. And I'm just sort of coming through it, gliding through it. Alright, get underneath, underneath the legs. See, I'm going to have to clean that belly out in a minute. Gliding off of this. Now, I don't want to cut the legs too short. I don't want it to look like they're on stilts. Now, I'm using this four. Just gliding through it, flowing with the direction of the hair. Now, you can see a big difference between the length of the hair on the legs and what I did on the back. And in a minute, I'm going to combine the two. Just going to lightly clean out under here. Now, with old dogs, you got to be careful when you lift the legs up too because they have arthritis and they hurt. See, I'm brushing this down, and you can still see that contrast between the two lengths of hair right there. I lift his leg up so he can't move forward and I can glide right through that. If they're moving it's hard to to get that skirt flowing just right. You're flowing off of it, flowing off of it like that. See? Flowing off the leg, holding it off the ground. I hold it up all the way at the top of the leg too, there too, so that you got more control. See, I'm holding this leg right here so I can see under it and I can sort of hold on to him to where he don't move while I'm getting that. <clears throat> and we're flowing off. Schnauzers hate, hate you clipping the front of their legs. I for some reason they have pretty sensitive legs and you just I hold the uh, the leg clear back to me that way I got control gently but firmly holding it so he can't jerk it they love to jerk and it's hard to do it when they're jerking they're pulling and we're gliding off of here Now in a little bit, I'm going to come back and I'm going to uh, get on the inside of the legs a little tighter with a lower blade. Right now I'm using a four. In a few minutes I'm going to use a five. And we're coming down through here, down each side. Now if you notice, I'm not doing the back of the dog's legs yet. Come down the front of the chest and blend this in. Like so. Now I'm going to clean out underneath. I got the blade all the way up on my Moser, my Bravada. This is about a 30 blade. You go very carefully in here because you have skin from the legs. Clean out his belly. 
You don't push too hard. You don't want razor burn. Right here, is, you got to be careful because that thin skin that connects the leg. <clears throat> now, I clean them underneath like this too. It gives me a different angle, and I can see the hair clean right around their doggy parts. Being very careful. switch this out and we're going to blend the two right here right where that line is at on the top I used a 10 on the bottom I used a 4 this is a 7 so it's that middle range and if you look I'm blending it off blending it off I'm trying to hide that line just a little bit I want you to see the line a little bit but I also don't want it to be predominant and I'm gliding off of here Gliding, gliding. I'm only pushing right there where that line is at. See? There we go. I'm going to do this side the same way. Blend these two. Top is a 10, bottom is a 5. The middle, right here where this line is, is a 7. And clean this out. Got to remember to clean up under the tail here, too. See that? They hold their tail down so you forget, so you be very careful. I hold the tail with my thumb and I just gently glide around the rectum, being very careful. See? Brush this down, make sure all the hair is pure, clean. And I'm going to combine the two. seven right in the middle ten on the top seven in the middle five on the bottom see how nice and clean that looks I'm trying to glide making that skirt real smooth just glide easy 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 now I'm not like some groomers I like my dogs look chiseled out some of them like them to look natural I like them to make them look like they've just been groomed that's just me it's all a preference. See, and I'm blending that in too. Right there, blending that in the front, that U shape, or shoe shape. Okay, now I'm going to use a three and three fourths. Remember, I didn't get the back of the front of the dog's legs. Back of the front. <laughs> anyway, on the back here of their legs, I leave it the back of their legs just a little longer there is usually a little cowlick a straight cowlick like right there that runs down it if you cut too close then it leaves a line on almost every dog and I like their dog their legs to look a little fluffy see on the front of the dogs legs I used a four I've got a longer blade, which is a three and three fourths blade, which is one size larger. The smaller the number, the longer the blade. Three and three fourths is one of the longest. Although I do use a five eighths blade, which is a little longer and then just a plain three-fourths blade which is even longer than that but I use those rarely I usually use those on Bichon heads All right, I'm cleaning underneath the pits there it's almost always matted right in there too so we want to be sure we get in there nice and good being very careful because there's skin underneath those arms and you don't want to catch it press it down brush this hair forward now and I'm going to even up that hair I'm using straight shears here if they have long legs I use straight shears if they have short legs I usually use curved shears
do the same thing here, brush it down, even it up, brush it backwards and forwards, and use my straight shears and straight cuts, long legs get straight scissors. This dog's a great little dog. He's very patient. People that don't bring their dogs very often, those are the ones that are a little more difficult. They're scared, they don't know what to expect. I don't blame the dog. They do the best they can. This one's groomed regularly, so he's no problem. There's always a little bit of a pull against what you're doing. But it's gentle, just gentle reinforcement on them. All right, leg ain't looking too bad. I'm gonna get right underneath that third toe is what I call it. Right under, see that right there where that toe is at. The blade usually can't get right there for some reason, so I just sort of skim up it just a little bit right to that toe. And I'm using the Moser. I don't want to push too hard, just skimming. Getting some of the hair underneath those nails. And I'm holding the dog's, or his leg down, pushing down so he can't lift up. And then I go all the way around it with my curved shears curved shears. These are Kenji curved shears. I left the uh, foot up so sometimes some of that hair is stepped on and it doesn't get clipped. And then I go all the way around it like that. Got to have sharp scissors. You're less likely to cut the dog if you have sharper scissors because you're not using as much force. I'm going to go around every one of the feet the same way here. It's, they're curved. See how that leg is curved? Like the curve on the shears. The dog is curved all over. I turn the shears backwards and then I can hit in that curve. Curved legs, curved shears. <clears throat> Straighten this line out. I start by the outside there, like that. Make my line. Now I'm going to use the Moser. I'm going to squat down here. The chair out of the way, squat down, and then I glide all the way across that Moser. All the way up, like 30 blades, see? That way it's straight. See how straight that is? Just make sure you got a steady hand. Now, do this side the same way. Brush it down, cut a straight line. Even it up, make sure it's the same length on both sides. I usually come up to the bend in that leg where I, where I bring that skirt down, although all dogs are different. And I'm doing the same thing here. Going straight across, meeting those other lines. I'll lift that leg up so I can see. All right, the curved shears, I'm going backwards with the shears cutting backwards. Turn it around for that bend in the leg, see? You can use those shears in all kinds of different ways, curved shears, depending on the curve on the dog. 
Okay. Now understand, this is the way that I do the schnauzers. I've seen them done different ways. I've been taught different ways. This is the way I like doing it. I like them to look chiseled. I like there to be a line where you can see the difference between the two hairs. I don't like it to be too predominant. I don't like it, the legs to be too fluffy. I like them to be nice and balanced. Now, you can lift them up and you can see underneath if your both sides have met. And it looks pretty even underneath there. Clean out just a little bit more underneath the legs there. If you see some spots that are sticking up, I usually glide over them lightly. With the blade all the way up. Okay, now we'll get the nails real quick. Dogs love to have their nails done. It's their favorite thing. Not. <laughs> All right. His nails are pretty short, so I'm just tipping at it. Better to leave them too long than to go too short, I can promise you. All that nice pretty white feet right there, if you clip one and they start to bleed, then you're spending time going back behind yourself using the uh, coagulant and trying to clean that paw up. So I just lightly clip first and then move forward. Now I'm going to use a five on the insides of the dog's legs, front and back. That way it makes it look nice and clean. Just a little bit on this side and the other side. I used originally a four. Now I'm going a little shorter with a five just on the insides of the legs. And just gliding off just a little bit to blend that in just a little bit. See? Sometimes I like use my Moser. Now this is tricky. You don't want to gap them, but if they're good like this dog, you got a little bit of control. See how nice and smooth that's looking now. All right, curved shears. I'm going to brush these eyebrows forward and make sure they're all evened up here. Now. Some people use or leave the eyebrows real long, but I don't. Underneath and clearing that out just a little bit. Bring that to a point, just making sure this side is the same size. Turn the scissor around backwards, clearing out underneath. Now you can leave them longer, shorter, whatever you want to do. But I try to bring them to a point, try to make sure they're both perfectly even with each other. And you got to consider the frequency at which a dog comes in too. You don't want to leave the hair too long if they don't come real often. You can go just a little shorter. Makes it easier on you later. And I clean around the mouth. Now I was holding his mouth tight. You don't want him to lick that scissor while you're going around it. Gently gliding. <clears throat> right through there to smoothen that up. Always dropping something. Now my table's a mess. A lot of groomers do a lot better than I do. They have everything on another table and then grab things as they need them, but I'm sort of set in my sloppy ways. Now I'm going to curve this off, even this up. See the two tones of hair making that even. Bring it all the way around. Alright, see the curved shear. Round it off. 
you can lift the dog's neck up and you can see how both sides lay at the same time. Now I'm going to curve this off. See where that white hair is? I'm going to cut it right up to where that gray is. Separating the colors. Curving it up, curving it up like that. Some people leave the schnauzers beards longer. I try to find a happy medium. See, I'm evening it up from both sides. I can see what both sides, how they hang. Push that down. Right. Make sure that's nice and even. Pulling the hair out from the mouth. A lot of times they pull that hair down in their mouth. look too bad. These eyebrows are still bugging me just a little bit. Now I'm going to use a, a four blade and I'm just going to thin off the top a little bit because they're they're kind of bulky. I'm just going to glide off the top of that just a little bit knocking some of that bulk off of it like I do their beard. Knocking some of the bulk off the top of it. There we go. If you notice the dogs, they wiggle a lot. That's part of being a groomer. You've got to learn how to flow with them. Being firm, but being gentle. That's something you learn over the years as a groomer. Sometimes these eyebrows are such a pain. Make them a little more pointy here, a little bit shorter. Make sure they're evened up. I may have gone just a hair too short here, but. That looks fine. Okay. Eyes there. Just sort of touching all that up just a little bit, separating it. Remember, know when to stop. You can keep cutting on a dog till there ain't nothing left. Now let's start to even up some. There we go, those look pretty good. Alright, got to get underneath that brow too. Alright, I'm going to hold his nose just a little bit. Now we use a four here on the front of his beard and I glide through it just a little bit to even all that up so it don't look scraggly. Gliding off of it, it hits the high points that way. Do this side the same way, don't push, glide. See, it knocks the high parts off. And it's a longer blade, so just glide. There we go. Heating that up. Yeah, there you go. Looking pretty good. Well, let's see. That's how it's balanced. It looks pretty balanced. All right. Let's grab a bandana. My mother-in-law makes the bandana. She does a fantastic job. And I put a little string on the back so it's easier to tie. Now we do the photography and I always match the bandanas up with what we're doing as a theme. Now this month is Valentine's Day month and we got a Valentine's Day banana, bandana. And here's the here's the set. All right, set them on the chair. Put the loop around them. It acts as a collar so they don't go jumping off the table and hurting themselves. I'm just a step away with the camera. Hook them up right here. I'll take the loop the uh, the loop out with Photoshop. Cut the lights on. 
knock off a few pictures get the dog's attention after you take about 50 pictures you get at least one okay that's all we have for today thank you for joining us be sure to like share and subscribe